So I'm saving a few plants for, I know I'm closing and selling out everything, but these trees are growing in the ground right here and they're not available right now. So I'm gonna grow them on and they're a couple of my favorites. Green penguin, I've mentioned that numbers of times, is it the Pinus sylvestris, the Scots pine. And um, one of my favorite trees and I've got a number of those. And then the more globose one and very similar but it's a mugo pine, so some of these might be hybrids. But again, both of them have, they come out with a long needle, then a shorter needle on top of that, and then there's a contrast of the, of the color as well. So, so we've got both of those mixed in here. I have a few Pinus mugo Jacobsons in here, again. Uh, and in this bed we have a few Jacobson Pinus mugo. Uh, again, one of my top choices for plants in it and a completely different Pinus mugo. Uh, it's, um, it's called... Okay, we'll have to cut for a second. Okay. Um, I think it's Fortsman's WV. Okay. That's a okay. sign back there. Yeah, the one right back here. So I've got four four of those, the Fortsman's WV. Uh, WV standing for Witch's Broom, so the more congested miniature type. And then a few radas left, which is similar to Jacobson, but a shorter needle, and I really like it. Color's a little bit different too, maybe just a little bit more gray. Then there's some Ensenadas. Ensenada, Pinus Ensenada is a subspecies of Mugo Pine, and this one's called Parade Kissin. Very dense and tight, and um, these would be nice best specimens in someone's yard at some point and those are probably about eight years old so really really nice pine so these i'm gonna hold on for a little bit and then we're gonna go back max is gonna pick out um an abies coriana icebreaker and i'll show you i'm holding on to the rest of those i sold quite a few of them lately so i'm gonna grow those on for another year or two probably so let's walk back there i went to the ginkgos the ginkgo bilobas um, the other day and there's quite a few miniature unusual ones here. These uh, belong to Dave Helms, and you've met him in other videos. So he did the grafting on these two years ago. Uh, there's some Weeping Wonders here. Um, there's, let's pick out a few other names. Um, I, anyway, these, I'm not gonna, I just shifted these up to a different size, so they're, they're not filled in yet. Um, garden Design, that's a, a tree that's not, um, I don't think that's an official name, but um, a grower in Oregon, I might have mentioned this before, um, ha had it in his inventory and, and Dave put that, that name on it. So I, I like the name and maybe it may not be official name, and it's, uh, but anyway, that's a, it's a nice variegated with some gold going on in it. So a little group of um, ginkgos have just been shifted up. So uh, another little group that I'm, I'm, I'm gonna hold on to for another year or so. And, um, See what, see what happens and um, another little tip and that I got from the Mr. Maple boys, uh, Matt and Tim, is that you know you should lime, put lime on your ginkgos once or twice a year and it's really beneficial to them to, to bring that uh, pH up to a more neutral uh, area so that uh, they benefit from, from that and probably up uptake nutrients better that way too. So, so let's move on to the next section that I'm so Max picked out an icebreaker, Aegis coriana, the Korean fir, and he's, he may put it in a pot, he may put it in the ground, he's asking which is best. So it's whatever, it will do well either way. It's gonna be a little bit more work in the pot. And again, we've done a couple of videos about putting your um, conifers and other plants in containers and the type of soil media that you use to uh, in your pot so this would be you could this one's in a grow bag you could put the whole grow bag in a pot, pot that's oversized somewhat fill the outside with uh, medium bark and grow it in a pot or stick this in the ground lift it in the uh, fall and then uh, uh, replant it in the fall probably October November would be a good time for that so the icebreakers have been a good seller. There's some other noble firs in here, a nice blue one, a couple different blue ones. 
Steel Bar Cascade, Cascade and uh, Glock up for Cummins, which is gonna a nice flat one. And um, so these I'm just, you know, probably sold half of what I had at least, and I'm gonna uh, keep these in my inventory for another year or so. So as I'm starting to get the inventory down there, um, there's gonna be less available. There is gonna be one more group of plants coming in. They belong to a friend of mine. He has a good inventory. They're, I mentioned this before, they're 12 to 20 year old uh, slow growing conifers. And I'll have those here this fall for, for six weeks. So that's the plan on that. So even though uh, my inventory is getting, getting quite low, I'm gonna have a nice little inventory for the closing as well. So, so let's uh, move on. So let's walk through the nursery again and just kind of see what what's going on. The Gennaro, who we did a video with, that he was on at the end of a video. Um, he did a, um, a a nice cleanup for me. Did weeding and cleaned all this up. I cleaned up the ginkgos that were right behind Max there, and then I've been pulling out other things. I'm down on the largest spruces. What I have left, Colorado blue spruces and this uh, uh, blue teardrop spruce. Uh, pulling out some daylilies. Some, so I do have other things other than conifers, but a nice rhododendron, impeditum with a really small leaf, and a lavender flower, ramapo, not as cold as it you know, could be. You got a little scrub. So this was full of larches all in this area and beyond, and we're down to the last five or six here. And then, yeah, so the so the trees are really really doing well here. Getting the spruces, a lot of pine down to the down to the bed where the serious is being until the afternoon. But ground cover still in here and my display area over there so anyway it's uh always fun to work with plants it's what i wanted to do when i um five years ago when we closed in the, the landscape business and so i've had that opportunity and and uh, i'm grateful for that and and we're just gonna you know move on with some little little tasks and um hopefully you'll still see some videos and um, as we as we go forward, so I hope you enjoy that. So I want to thank you for joining us, and um, and uh, let me know if you have any if you do have any questions or comments. Leave them down, down there. I'll say uh, you know hi to those that uh, that do leave comments. Steve is pretty regular on on um, leaving comments for me, and I really appreciate that. Back in the Great Lakes area, so appreciate that, Steve. So for now, we'll say goodbye, and we'll see you next time.